Hello, my name is Silvio Friedman. I'm a technical and scientific photographer graduated in Israel, and I'm going to be sharing with you photographic images of my three journeys to Poland. I would like to thank the Holocaust Memorial in Miami Beach, Sharon Horowitz, the executive director, and Danny Reed in charge of education for allowing me to record this class for all of you. So let me share the screen now. So this is an educational project. It's part of a series, Art as Therapy, Documentation, Education and Healing, an artist's vision of the Holocaust in Poland. As I told you before, this is my journey to be a witness for life of the systematic murder of Jews as part of the final solution or genocide. This is not a class of history. I visited the death camps three times and I documented and collected thousands of images. In this class, you will be exposed to some of these photographic images. The goal of this class is to share with you how you can use art as therapy and how you can become a witness for life. These images are an act of resistance. First, you learn to cope with the Shoah or the Holocaust through art by using an artistic outlet to deal and to heal with the worst man-made tragedy in the history of human civilization. And second, you will become a witness for life. The Holocaust in numbers. There were six million of Jewish victims. It happened only 75 years ago. I will spend the next 35, 40 minutes to share with you my journey to Warsaw, Poland and the death camps. And all it takes from Florida is a flight of 11 hours to be transported to Poland and to the death camps. What is the Holocaust? The Holocaust is the worst man-made created tragedy in the history of civilization. There are four identified groups and at the end of this class, we all be together part of this group, Witnesses for Life. There were six million of Jewish victims. There were the Holocaust survivors. There are some denialists. And then us, the Witnesses for Life. Now, how I became a Witness for Life? visiting the theater of operations of the stage in Poland. I visited Auschwitz, Birkenau, Treblinka, and Majdanek, which are death camps. I listened, listened to the Holocaust survivor stories. I traveled with Julius Eisenstein, with David Mermelstein, with Peter Tarjan, with Sally Doman, with Sam Peltz, Anita Carr, Laszlo Selly, and Ele Chaiset seeing the evidence with the survivors, the ashes, the eyeglasses, the orthopedics, the teeth, the hair, the shoes, the cattle wagons, the barracks, the gas chambers, and the crematoriums. That's how I became a witness for life. Julius Eisenstein, 101 years old, old today, this year, he joined me on my first journey to Varsha, to the death camps. He is a survivor. And he's going to come along with us in our journey. The transportation system in Europe play a key role on the final solution. 
This is a locomotive that transported the victims. Here you have in one of the trains, some teenagers that play the role of victims. They were cattle wagons and they were loaded about 100, 150 of people standing with just a little bit of water to do their necessities, just a container. I can recall the story of one survivor that stated that the conditions were so terrible that some of them had diarrhea and they were held in this hall to be able to do their necessities. It stink, people die in these wagons while they were transported to the death camps. You can just imagine. This is one of the two hooks to hold into inside the cattle car. This is me, a moment of reflection and introspection inside one of those wagons or cattle cars. I close my eyes and I smell and I heard the screams of the victims transported to the death camps. This is a sample of the thousands and millions of pieces of luggage that were collected. They went into their apartments and they were told that in 15 minutes they needed to pack with the other essentials and they were being relocated. Everything about the Holocaust is about deception. So they put together their personal belongings, they wrote their names, and of course, when they arrived to the station in the death camps, these were taken away from them with the promise that they would be reunited with their personal belongings later on. This is a sample of one of the pieces of luggage, one last name, one number, one family, one history, memories, that got lost forever. It's up to us to keep them alive as witnesses. We are now entering into Auschwitz-Birkenau, one of the death camps in Poland. How ironic and how sarcastic that when we enter Auschwitz, we are now greeted by this sign and by this sign, and by this sign. But this is the most meaningful sign probably of the Holocaust and the most famous one, which is works make you free. They were promised that if they were going to work, they will regain their freedom. So this is the entrance to Auschwitz. We are now inside of Auschwitz. Remember that these victims, hours or just days ago, they were in the ghettos or they were living some type of normal life and suddenly they were find confined prisoners and future victims, victims of a genocide. Some of this barbed wire was electrified. There was nowhere to go. This is in Birkenau. This is a sample of an electrified fence out of Auschwitz. Human beings treated as cattle or worse. As I told you, they were allowed and they were asked to take their personal utensils, giving him the hope 
that life will continue, they will be relocated. Well, all that, all were lies and they collected all their personal belongings. This is a sample of cooking utensils collected from the Jews upon arriving to Auschwitz. Everything was repurposed and it was either sold or reused. They all die together, millions of them. This is a sample of shoes collected from men and women. But let's focus on just one shoe. This is a shoe of a child. Is this shoe that lost it in the cattle wagon as it was transported to the death camp? Was this shoe part of the indumentary when they were asked to get naked to go to the gas chambers? This shoe has a history. I want you to focus on one individual, one life at a time. There were six millions of pairs of shoes or 12 million shoes like this one with a history and a life and dreams behind like you and I have. All lost forever. Eyeglasses, thousands of them, if not millions, bear witness to the genocide. More personal utensils, shaving creams, orthopedics, they didn't discriminate. If you were handicapped, they just took away your orthopedics and they repurposed them. All evidence of the genocide. If you survive another day, this was your daily meal. Just a few hundreds of calories, if you were lucky. This is the official sign to enter the disinfection chambers or the gas chambers. Of course, they were lied that they were going to take a shower and get disinfected, but actually they were gas and killed and murdered. These containers of Zyklon gas, they bear witness as silent witnesses to the genocide. They pour the content of this gas which were there were small pallets inside the gas chamber. There was a wire com com compartment and as it got heated by the heat of the people inside the gas chamber, it evaporated and the gas in about 15 to 20 minutes murder all the people inside the gas chamber. This is another image inside the gas chamber. Later on, they became even more curious and more sophisticated and they built this Peep hole. And this is the interior of the gas chamber and an ado a door adapted for mass murdering and to be able to watch from outside 
the show. It was an industry of death. Proudly, the manufacturer shows here the brand. This is the peak hole in the gas chamber door. This is the roof hole in the gas chamber from which they inserted the Zyklone B gas. This is a close up of the empty containers of Zyklone B gas. Now towards the end of my class, I will have a surprise recap and I encourage you all to stay tuned for that. Visitors and witnesses for life of this horror, they try to find comfort somehow when they leave the crematoriums of the gas chambers. This is the front of a cattle car at Birkenau that transported the victims to their deaths. As I said before, each of these transported 100 to 150 victims and made many, many trips bringing games to their death just because they were Jewish. This is the entrance towards the end here. They were the big crematoriums. Here you have one image of a crematorium that has been destroyed because the Nazis, they try to destroy all evidence when they find out that the camps were going to be liberated. So they almost managed to do that completely at Auschwitz-Birkenau. Yes, as a photographer, I digitally enhance the contrast on this image to emphasize the contrast between life and death. The trains with only one destination, death. There is no answer to Auschwitz. To try to answer is to commit a supreme blasphemy. Abraham Yeshua Heschel, Jewish theologian rabbi. Let's step now into Treblinka, another death camp. And Julius Eisenstein is still with us. Treblinka was an extermination camp exclusively. Treblinka was located in a forest. When you go today and visit, you think that you are in a very picturesque location where you hear the birds and the trees, they bear witness to the horrors of history. The train used to take here almost 1 million victims to Treblinka. As a memory in Treblinka, there are now 
14,000 stones that each is dedicated to one of the villages or towns where there were victims of the Holocaust. Here is again myself hugging my father's hometown stone in Treblinka, Biela Podlaska. This is where a pit where they used to burn and cremate. With some stones lay there in memory of the victims. Maidanek. Maidanek is another one of the concentration camps. It looks like you're in a summer camp when you don't go in the winter. It's a pastoral view of an extermination camp. On my three journeys to Varsha, I was able to go in different times of the year with different type of weather. And this is so deceiving when you see Maidanek this way. But this does not lie. These are the toilets in Maidanek in one of the barracks. In speaking to one of the survivors or several of the survivors, they said that this was the biggest humiliation of their lives, but this was the only time that they got to somehow have a sense of community. Victim shoes at Maidanek, unthinkable. Thousands and thousands of shoes. Think again about that only one pair of shoe with that string that you saw before. That lost life. This is a witness confronting the magnitude of the crime. Another witness in this belief a thousands of victim shoes in Maidanek. Maidanek is one of the camps that it was not destroyed. The evidence is there because they were not able to destroy it before it was liberated. So it bears witness to the genocide. This is an electrified barber wire fencing at Maidanek. This is the industrial effort to destroy the evidence. After they were killed and murdered on the gas chambers, the bodies, lifeless, were transported to the crematoriums and they were cremated, trying this way to destroy the evidence, male, female, young, adults, seniors, babies, unthinkable. Here you have a sample of some of those people lives full of hopes and dreams that were murdered and cremated. They were able to carry some photographs with them 
when they left the ghettos or their towns in a rush. And this is just a collection, a selection of them. Just look at their faces, how they are dressed, people in all kinds of trades, with all types of skills at different stages of their life, living a happy life and making a contribution to society. In Maidanic, there is a memorial, and this is the memorial. And this memorial bear witness to tons of ashes of victims. These are the ashes. Here you have a witness for life, a teenager, he's 17 years old. And he joined me in this trip with Julius, which was 97 years old. Julius was probably his age when he went through this genocide. Now, he has seen it with his own eyes and is a witness for life. Not all victims were Jews, but all Jews were victims. Eli Wiesel, a Holocaust survival, an Oler laureate. In Auschwitz, there is a pavilion. And this is the Israeli pavilion where they are gathering the names of each one of the victims of the Holocaust. They have over four and a half million names already. And in this page, there are all Friedman victims with the same spelling of my last name. Not all my family members, but some of them for sure were. And this is just touches you when you see the name printed in black and white, your own name in a book of death. What actually was our sin? I found this apple in Auschwitz. And the paradox of finding this in such a place of death and solitude. Definitely a metaphor of life. In Auschwitz, you have this memorial, which are ashes from Holocaust victims and pictures of today as a monument of survival. This is a, this you have here ashes on a loop. And I took with me the pictures of my own family, three daughters, my wife, and 10 grandchildren as a document and testimony that we are here alive and we shall never forget. I ponder about the question, will it ever be over? as we are witnessing a lot of incidents of anti-Semitism in our time, in our decade, this year, and in our country, and in the world. 
The opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. Eli Wiesel. I propose that this as a move forward plan. Visit the Holocaust Memorial at Miami Beach or wherever you have one near to where you reside. Visit any Holocaust Memorial, visit any Holocaust Museum. Talk to Holocaust survivors. Be proactive as a witness for life. Be an agent of change and fight any form of intolerance. This is the Holocaust Memorial in Miami Beach. Looking towards the future. Almost touching the Holocaust. And this is the auditorium at the Holocaust Memorial where you have classes by Holocaust survivors and educators. And here you have some images that supplement those classes that I took that bear witness to the Holocaust. You don't have to like me, but why do you have to hate me? Julius speaking at the Holocaust Memorial. We must always take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victims. Silence encourages the tormentor, never the tormented. Eli Wiesel. Who is a bystander? People who are passive and indifferent to the escalating persecution that culminated in the Holocaust. Being a bystander, it is not an option. And let's go back to the slide that we started. And now we are witnesses for life. Here is a picture of Julius with his own liberation at the Daha camps. And the Holocaust was a genocide against the Jewish people and an attempt to bury and destroy and any trace of the millenary Jewish culture and traditions. This Torah scroll was found in 2002 by Sharon Horowitz, executive director of the Holocaust Memorial in Miami Beach and a group from the March of the Living while one of her trip to Warsaw, Poland. This Torah is dated to 1906 and it also survived the Holocaust. This Torah resides now in Miami and as Julius, it bears witness to the horrors of the Holocaust. Those who have a way to live can bear with almost any how. Viktor Frankl from Man's Search for Meaning. You have now become a witness for life with the power to educate and to heal. Your strength, your resilience, your courage will defeat intolerance, prejudice, and hate. Never forget, never again. Choose life, or in Hebrew, tipor haim. And now, let's recap together this 40-minute journey of events that happened 75 years ago and that annihilated 6 million Jews.
you now are a witness for life. And I want to conclude this class with some very meaningful words found on the diary of Anne Frank, a Holocaust victim at age 15. It's really a wonder that I haven't dropped all my ideals because they seem so absurd and impossible to carry out. Yet, I keep them because in spite of everything, I still believe that people are good at heart. I hope that you found this class informative and valuable and share it with your friends, family, neighbors. And you will be forever a witness for life and never a bystander. Thank you. Shalom.